My guest today is Mike Benkovich. Mike, how are you? I'm doing good, David. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I've been following you on the internet, and you are a busy guy. You're lots of projects, lots of speaking. Oh, it's been nothing but uh, you know, a fun summer of doing, and uh, it's great that conferences are back in person. Yeah. And it, it was great to uh, cross paths with you on the road there a couple times. Yeah. This summer. Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska. Yeah. 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 Um, are you, uh, I want to talk to you about uh, infrastructure as code. We had a conversation sure. before we started recording about that, and you you work a lot with this, right? I do. I do. I've been doing a lot with uh, the Azure Resource Manager or ARM templates for several years. And then the last uh, last nine months or so, I've been doing a lot with Terraform and then, uh, you know, tying those into DevOps processes and using it to you know, get a consistent infrastructure so we can deploy that out across you know, all the different environments that we need to. Yeah. Can, you def- can you define infrastructure as code for me? I can't. You know, when you think about uh, going into a cloud and you want to deploy, you know, a set of uh, maybe a, a virtual machine, you want to maybe do a web app, you want to do a couple of uh, insights, you want to do some monitoring, try to figure out what that infrastructure looks like and deploying it. You can do that from the portal. You can go and you can click through different things, but it's not very repeatable. I mean, you could try to, you know, write a nice long script to tell someone how to go out and do that, but making it into something that you can do over and over again. Well, that's where uh, code comes in, and infrastructure as code is really describing what that infrastructure looks like, but using a tool, uh, a tool like, uh, like I said, ARM templates. Uh, there's also a tool called Bicep, which um, you can use to create that ARM templates. Um, there's third-party tools like uh, Pulumi, uh, Terraform, Ansible that also you can use uh, to do different kinds of infrastructure as code. So, so the idea is to uh, automate the process of deploying something like a database or an Azure app service or just anything. Uh, mm-hmm. So, and repeatability is really the goal there, just so that you, right. can, you don't have to have the labor of human intervention and the potential errors of human intervention. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You get, you get a, you know something that's more consistent, and and you can also a lot of the tools allow you to have different parameters for different environments. So you can you know size up to things differently. For instance, you might have a Kubernetes cluster that uses really large virtual machines for all the nodes in production, but you've got a smaller size when you're in dev or test. Uh, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, or maybe you just hit a different database, even if it's the same size, so you're not, mm-hmm. your tests aren't polluting the, 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 the production database. Mm-hmm. Um, Another- is this, a, this is, you said talking about different environments. Is this, um, when I've worked with infrastructure as code, it's, it's, almost always to deploy to Microsoft Azure. Is that the primary purpose or are there other purposes as well? Well, infrastructure as code you can use for on-premises. You can use it for different clouds. Um, you know, I've used it primarily for Azure because I've been primarily an Azure consultant, but uh, the same tools that I'm using, I can apply to other things sometimes, depending on what they are, uh, whether it's Amazon, Google, whether it's even on-prem. Um, some of the tools have some real great uh, cross-platform capabilities. But one of the things that infrastructure as code does allow me to do, and I can do this across all those different clouds and all those different environments, is enforce and enable some of those cloud governance concepts, hmm. things like naming standards. You know, how do I name things? And I can apply a consistent formula to how I go out and do that, no matter where it's going. And I can use those same formulas to enforce that when things get created, that we're naming them or tagging them. Uh, and in a consistent way. So infrastructure as code, you know, allows us to deploy the infrastructure in a repeatable way, but it also allows us to do it in a governance kind of a mindset so that we're doing it in a way that is, makes the cost of ownership less by uh, being more consistent in things. Hmm. Can you walk me through some of these tools and how you actually use them to deploy infrastructure? Sure, sure. Um, I can, uh, you know, kind of talk through a, a lot of these uh, different concepts. Um, you know, probably the idea of creating infrastructure as code starts out with having some files that we create. 
Would you like to see a demo of something like this? Yeah, let's try that. Go ahead and share your screen. I see your screen now. What are we okay. looking at? So I got a website here. I call it my dad app, and I want to be able to run this out in Azure somewhere. So to do that, I could go into uh, into the Azure portal, and I could go out and I could create a new deployment, you know, and I could go, hey, let's create a, a web app. So, you know, just by going from here, I could select out all the different things I want to do. Yep. The trouble is making that repeatable, and that's where uh, ARM templates and infrastructure as code kind of comes in. And so I, I actually have already deployed a website out here. And if I wanted to see what it looked like, I could go into the deployments under the settings in the portal, and I can see here's my deployment. I can see exactly what that deployment looked like down to the template I used. In my template, I can say, you know, here's my resources, here's my parameters. There's some variables I use to uh, do my naming scheme. Um, and I've got the resources that get created for that. And um, kind of understanding the structure of what, you know, one of these things looks like. Um, I find that Visual Studio and VS Code are, are a couple of nice tools to start with. Um, Visual Studio, for example, if I open up, I, I've got a uh, ARM uh, a project I added. Okay. Um, one of the project types I can add in Visual Studio is going to be what's called a resource group project. So if you do a search up here for resource group project, it does VB and C sharp. It's actually just JSON. So JSON and PowerShell. But you can call those, you know, my deploy or whatever you want to call it. And it will add a project that has inside of it a starting template. And one of these things that's nice is I could do a web app from here, web app plus SQL, and I can say, okay, let's use that. And it'll give me everything I need to be able to start out a deployment uh, with a website with SQL database. Oh, nice. If you open this, what? go ahead. Nice. Yeah. Um, you can see in here things like allowed values. So when I do a deployment, I can specify, you know, I don't want them to be P4. Or I just want to go up to P1. And maybe I want to get rid of some of these uh, other SKU types for websites. Maybe I don't want, you know, I just want free, standard one, and then maybe P1 or something like that. Um, but I can do different things on the parameters section of this. Um, I can also specify, you know, uh, some metadata about how this is going to work. Mm -hmm. uh, the great thing about this is I can go out and I can do a deployment by right-clicking on here and going and saying, create a new deployment, and then picking my subscription. I'm going to go with my DevDad subscription. And this thing should be set up to load up a, um, a place where I can test my deployment and make sure everything is going to work. Takes it a little a second or two. This is actually going out to Azure and looking it's, at where you will deploy it. Yes. And Sometimes this thing is a little bit quirky. So let me log into my uh, subscriptions here. And this is where the tools are really cool when they work. And I can go and I can pick my sandbox subscription. I can pick the resource group being our tech and friends resource group. And then I got my website SQL database template that's right here we're looking at. And I've got some parameters. If I have the parameters that I can specify in here, what am I going to call this? I'll call this, you know, my our tech and friends plan. And then I can put this as an F1 SKU capacity, my admin login. SQL admin, and then for a password, I could just put in plain text here. Um, maybe that's not. The best use way my to do it. password. It's password one two three. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, and I could do that. Password one two three, and we'll save it as plain text in the parameter file. Um, but a better way. Safe. <laughs> a better way would be to use a key vault. So let's do that. In here, I've got a key vault where I've got some secrets. Um, if I got a existing ADO SQL password I could use. I could create a new one. Uh, if I scroll all the way down to the, or go to the top and say create a new one, we'll call this my tech and friends password. And what was it? Password. 
Uh, yeah, capital T, and then I just to be really secret, I might replace the A with an add sign because that's super secure. Oh yeah, but once I do this, say okay, now it's stored in my uh, in my key vault. And I'll give it a database name. We'll call this my my tech DB, and then I can specify addition basic. I can go size, and then click on save and click on deploy. And what it's going to do is it's going to take that um, template now, and it's actually running a PowerShell script. And I can mm -hmm. see that in the output. So if I open up my output, you can see down here that it's actually going out and it's going to launch a script to verify that I've got everything. And then it's going to try to do the deployment um, out into that resource group. And the nice mm -hmm. thing about it is that ARM template is... Uh, you know, going to have a consistent way to get this to deploy over and over and over again. Right. That is nice. That's probably the way you do it. You wouldn't uh, right click inside a Visual Studio to deploy. You want to put it in some sort of automated process. Maybe write a mm -hmm. PowerShell script or plug it into uh, some CI CD tool, right? Well, and the thing is, you could look at the, we've got two things we're deploying. One is the code of the app itself, and the other is the infrastructure that the code is running on. Okay. And so you deploy the infrastructure probably once, and then you might deploy the code many times. Oh, I see. Okay. So this is and getting so, this into the, this is just the infrastructure, the, yep. uh, the IAC stuff that we're deploying. Right. Right. So we would probably do a continuous delivery pipeline as well to do the um, deployment of the code after we've got this out there. Um, think of it like, um, you know, I'm going to create the, the hardware, the environment that everything is going to run in. Now this this will take a few minutes to run, but you know taking a look at this uh, layout for the art for the JSON, um, the formats it's very readable. You have resources, and if, if you use the outline things, you can kind of collapse stuff up and down, and it'll mm -hmm. um, give you some of that. Um, there's a JSON outline if you click on uh, the search JSON and then go to the JSON outline view. Um, this is a nice way to navigate. The, the template, because I can go to SQL Server, I can go to the website. You know, like for instance, in my website, I might have a, a new resource I want to add, like maybe a configuration. Um, so I can add a configuration section for this, and we'll call this my you know, site config. And it'll go out and it'll add that site config where I can put in my key and value uh, for um, the app settings on this when it gets deployed. So it's kind of a nice way to get out there and be able to manage and navigate ARM templates if you haven't done this before. Yeah, that um, is a nice tool. Uh, this is, um, I know there is a learning curve in doing uh -huh. things like creating this ARM template here. And I think that tooling like this can really help that because it, it gives you a, a starting point. It really does. But on the other hand, it is also kind of limiting. Um, there's... The IntelliSense on this is is good, but it's not great. So, for instance, if I go here and I say I want to use a formula by using like concat, okay. well, you know, I've got a little red thing there. But if I want to go to my parameter, parameter, parameters, and then I'm like, okay, well, what parameters do I have? I don't get the IntelliSense on this, oh, you know, and it's like eh, this isn't really the best way to do it. Um, VS Code on the other hand, is a tool that uh, they have invested a lot into. And so, you know, I could take a look at the same thing, but, you know, view it inside of VS Code. Right. If I go to, for instance, my package manager console, open this up, and if you have VS Code installed, just type in code, period, it'll open up this project in VS Code. And then I could edit the same template here as well. Go to deploy folder, here's my website, and I can see all of the different things in here. Um, now, understanding all of the JSON you would need, sometimes I find it's a little bit easier to explain if I just right click and I show you what it looks like when you create a new one. So like say we call this, you know, my test site or test.json. Um, by having the extension of, of JSON, I have uh, some IntelliSense that uh, gets loaded for ARM templates. So I've installed an extension inside of here, and it's the ARM template, A-R-M. And in the in, once you have this installed, um, I can use the uh, the snippets to be able to make this go quicker. Okay. A lot of, 
so a lot of times when I'm doing um, when I'm doing infrastructure code, naming is an important thing to me. I want to be able to pass in a parameter like for our app name, and then have it figure out what names to use for other things. So, if, for instance, I might add a parameter here, knows the intelligence. Yeah. There, I can call this my app name, right? And it's going to be a string, and I could have a description for it. Um, of course, this is a very verbose way to do it. Um, I created my own little snippet for uh, some of these variables. I'm going to get rid of that space. Um, so you could do something as simple as uh, just a parameter with a, a type of string, say right. environment name, right? The, um, the second section that I care about is functions and variables. Not so much with the functions, but a lot with the variables. Because in the variables, I can go out and I can create things like my site name. Or let's go first with our plan name, our hosting plan. And what I can do inside of this is I'm going to do a concatenation of my uh, variables or my parameters where I'm pulling in my uh, app name. And then I might have a dash. And then I might have another parameter for my um, environment name. Oh, I see. But you notice the IntelliSense, it just kind Way of... Way better than uh, the other environment. Yeah. And and it's like, you know, I end up doing a lot of uh, a lot of this kind of coding. So it's like, here's my site name. Let's do the same thing. Concat. My parameters of app name. Tick dash tick. And then my parameters. Actually, let's do this. Let's call this our prefix. Because I like to have uh, a prefix that I apply to a lot of different things. Oh. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, variables of my prefix and then do a comma dash tick dash site. And I'm going to do a comma and we'll just duplicate this for the host name. Got it. And then over here, we'll call this uh, dash host. Yeah. Uh, oh, you're missing a parenthesis uh, on line 16 just before the square bracket, the, the ending square bracket. Oh, yes, you're right, right there. A quote. There we go. Yeah. This code does a lot of good things, but it doesn't do everything. Um, Lisa, and then Lisa inside of here, I can go. To, mm -hmm. So I can do my arm farm. And it gives me my uh, apps resource plan. And uh, one of the things that Visuals VS Code does real well is multiple editors or multiple lines. So I can go here and I can say replace that with my variables. That is cool. For my host name, and it does it in all all the places. And I can come down here and say, ah, yeah. Now let's add the site. And there's my web app. And then down here we can put in the um, app service name. So here I would do variables. And this is going to be my site name. And I come over here and this is my app service plan. So let's do this. Yeah. Variables of my host name. And I just need to put a tick up here to close this out. There we go. And then you can see the IntelliSense gives me the coloring, which gives it a, a nice, easy way to go out and do this. Right. Um, but by doing that, it, it just makes it a lot easier to work, I'd find, in um, in VS Code with the uh, with the uh, ARM files. And ARM is is the Azure Resource Manager. You can view it inside the portal. Um, you can deploy it from the command line. You can deploy it from uh, different places. Um, 
inside of my uh, talk, I usually go through and I say, here's my uh, ARM template. Um, if I have a resource group that I created, I can use the uh, command line to go out and do an Azure deployment and okay. create that deployment right out to uh, to a website. And I can use the uh, parameters that are part of that too. Um, one of the things that I can do is I can get outputs from it. So if I define an output section, I can take out from there, like for instance, the deployment name, I can show um, the site name, I can get the resource group name, um, a lot of different things if I've defined those. Um, in this particular website here, I've got some outputs for the site name and I'm pulling the variables back out and then the uh, resource group name. Oh, very nice. But I can, but so I see this is mywebsite.json. If you go back to the uh, PowerShell, or sorry, the CLI that you were showing earlier, mm -hmm. uh, mywebsite.json is the template name that you were mm -hmm. passing in to the CLI yep. command. Uh, yep. Where's your CLI? Oh, there we go, right there. So right there, mm -hmm. dollar sign template file, and that's in the as the deployment group create. Uh, yep. It's one of the arguments there. Very cool. Yeah. And, and one of the things about this is that, you know, ARM is pretty verbose. It takes a lot to kind of get into it. And uh, some people are like, well, you know, it'd be nice if you could have a cleaner way to do that. Um, so they introduced a project called BICEP. And BICEP as a project, I, I can show you a slide on this is actually uh, might make sense. Um, project BICEP is uh, an ARM transpiler. And what that means is that when I run BICEP commands, it, 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 the output is ARM. Hmm. When you say commands, you're talking about CLI or PowerShell commands? Yeah, so I can run a command on a CLI for BICEP and uh, be able to uh, work with ARM templates, but using the BICEP language. Hmm. So, um, so let me show you what I mean by that. Yes, please. So, so this is my uh, this is my website with SQL database. You know, the one that we created. Lots of stuff in here. Um, not the cleanest. This one down here I created, it's got the um, nice clean inputs and outputs. If I am in this folder, let me see you there. Infra slash arm. And I do an AZ bicep decompile. And I say my file name is going to be my website.json. This is going to create for me a bicep file. Hmm. And um, so it gives me a few warnings, but that's okay. Um, but up here, you'll see that now I've got this website BICEP bice file. Hmm. And just you look at the BICEP file, and it's got parameter section where I've got, you know, here's my inputs. I've got a secret value that I'm using where I'm going to say that might come from a key vault. Um, I've got my variables for the site name, and it's just a simple, you know, language of saying, oh, take these variables. Um, the syntax it uses for uh, for working with variables and parameters is using the dollar with a squiggly bracket on it to get to the parameters. Um, and then I can use those things, those variables down later. So like, for instance, here's my host name variable. Right there, it gets passed into this for my server farms. And the nice thing about this is that it's a much more readable uh, format than what uh, ARM is. Uh, some people say it's a lot like Terraform because there's a lot of similarities in well, how you this, format this, things in Terraform. This, we're running short on time, but describe briefly what is Terraform. Terraform is another tool you could use instead of ARM and BICEP. ARM and BICEP are Azure-specific tools to work with Azure. Uh, Terraform is an infrastructure as code tool that I can use across clouds. So I can use it for Azure. I can use it for AWS, I could use it for Google, I could use it for New Relic, I can write a provider for just about any kind of uh, different thing, and it will allow me to use this kind of a syntax to go out and say I want to go out and deploy things. Um, the big difference between ARM and BICEP is that we're using, when I do a deployment, it's saving it inside of Azure in the format of, a, of an ARM template. I could see that when I was out here looking at the deployments, I can see what I deployed, when I deployed it, you know, all the details of it. And I can even, you know, pull back and use those templates to define other things. With Terraform, it maintains its own state database. And it does that by going into um, into a folder. So, for instance, 
this is another project I've got. It's a Terraform project. And the Terraform has a format where you've got a set of providers that it's going to bring in. Um, I'm using the Azure RM provider. I've got a uh, data reference, which is to something that is my connection to how I'm logged into Azure. And then using that, then I can go out and I can set up some variables. I can set up some locals and I'm using my name st naming standards the same way I do inside of ARM and BICEP. Um, and then it goes on and defines the resource groups, the plans and does the deployments. Um, the difference is that when I run this, um, so if I'm looking at my, uh, my BICEP, if I wanna go out and, and test running this, first of all, um, I could take my BICEP file that I created from ARM and then add it down here. Here's my resource group and I could go out and define exactly what this is gonna look like. Um, and then I can do a control K, uh, save everything. And I can go out and I could say, here's my deployment. I can go out and I can create a deployment of the same thing. Let me pull up some variables here. Let's do an F8. That sets those. I can come down and I can do a deployment using an AZ deployment at the subscription level for, for BICEP. Hmm. Do a deployment. And this then is going to go out and create, you know, that kind of a deployment. Um, and and then I would, you know, fix the errors or whatever. I'm in the wrong folder, so I would need to change right. over to it. That's okay. Um, I think it's yep. actually and given, Yeah. But the deployment of ARM is using the AZ deployment commands. Mm -hmm. When I do Terraform, I use a, a different set of commands. And this is Terraform init. First of all, you have to install Terraform, which is a processor. Put it onto your uh, command line. Um, I use Chaco to install it. So if you do a Chaco install, and then Terraform. It'll go out and download and install the latest version of Terraform. Yep. When I've done that, let me cd to my .bat slash Terraform folder. I run a command called Terraform init. And this is going to go out and it's going to download and initialize the Terraform engine. And it's going to look at the Terraform file that is the main file. And it's going to say, oh, or what modules are you including? What resource managers are you doing? And it'll go down and it'll install all of those things that it needs. Now, when that gets done, I can do a Terraform plan and it'll show me what it would do to um, create that, that infrastructure that's defined here. And it will create a state file that has the information about what is there. So you can see it's, it's installed the Terraform. I can now go Terraform plan. And then it'll give me a plan, but I can also do Terraform apply. And it'll run the plan first. So it's going to ask me for my variables. I have an app name, environment name, and a color. So it'll prompt me for those. Let's call this uh, tech and friends. And we'll call, what's your favorite color? Green. Green. Okay. And then environment name, we'll call this Terraform. And what it's going to do is it's going to go through and take those inputs and it'll calculate out all the names that we would have. And then it's going to do a deployment of the resources that we defined in here. In this case, it's going to be a resource group. It's going to be an app service plan with the uh, location name. Um, it's going to be a Linux uh, plan. And then it's going to come down here and it's going to create the app with some settings. So. This all gives me kind of an input, kind of a nice colorful thing where I can see exactly what gets created. Nice. Yeah, I can say, do I, do I want to do this? We'll say yes. And now it's going to go out and it's actually going to do that deployment of this Terraform stuff into, um, into the cloud. Now, a okay. couple, couple things it did is it added this folder dot Terraform, which is where all of those resources that downloaded the, the resource manager and other things. It created a lock file and it also created a TF state file, this guy right here. And that TF state file has everything about what this Terraform, what, what, what the environment looks like. So everything that the plan showed will show up inside of that TF state file when this is done. Hmm. And then I can open it up and I can show you, uh, but it's going to happen after this gets done creating. So 
Right now it's creating the plan. Now it's creating the app. And I can see, you know, the status as it's going through and doing this stuff. Very cool. All right, we can just let that run. I, I just want to yeah. uh, to wrap up. What's the um, a good place for people to get started who are just learning this? I know we, this is a lot of information to dump on people that are that don't have an experience. So, if you're interested in getting started on this, um, I've got a repo out there. I get a repo, um, and that is if you go out to my GitHub PTC. And then down here, I've got infrastructures code. There's the slides that I use, um, but there's also some links down here as to how to get started. And from these resources, I've got uh, you know comparing you know do I do bicep or do I do uh, Terraform? That comes back to questions that you have to ask of you know how do I want to manage my state? Do I want to let the portal manage it or do I want to have an external thing? Do I you know how do I manage? cross-platform? Do I need to be able to do you know, multiple clouds? Do I need to be able to do other things? Um, those kind of come in to how you decide what you want to do. Um, and then there's just some other links here that kind of do some good uh, you know, side-by-side stand-up and give you a chance to work with it. But the Excellent. code that I showed you is actually in the infra folder. So that's oh, kind nice. of what we that's just That's a great place. At. I'll put a link in the show notes, but that is uh-huh. github.com slash banco tips slash pt C. Yep. There's the comparison between these different technologies kind of comes back to asking the questions about what it is you're trying to do and how you want it to look. Um, so I, I encourage you to go out and check that out. Um, but let's go over here to the portal. Let's go to our tech and friends. So if we search for tech and friends and we do a refresh on this. And there's our tech and friends Terraform. Oh, it resource finished group. running. Excellent. It actually ran. It created our Tech and Friends Terraform plan, our Tech and mm. Form Terraform site. If I look at my deployments, nothing there because it didn't do a deployment. It did Terraform to put this out there, mm. which means it didn't go through the ARM resources. It went through the REST API, which talks to Azure. So kind of a different way to put things out, out there. Um, and that's kind of one of the things when you're looking at the different tools and deciding is, you know, how do you manage history and be able to keep track of things? Excellent. Well, Mike, I really appreciate the time and I learned a lot today. Thank you so much. Oh, friends like friends work with technology, but technology and friends is the way to go. Technology is always better with friends. Friends, technology, need I say more? Cheers. <laughs>